Well, here's a part that an engineer has drawn up in his CAD. Uh, you can see the wireframe behind, which was extruded to make the solid. And what happens is he's going to take that solid model and he's going to uh, give you something that looks like this. Let me just center this up a little bit. There we go. Um, so we can see here the part is symmetrical except where noted. So all of these outside radii here are one inch and the inside radius is a two inch radius. There's your center height center height of this four inch radius. So the two inside radii are what's different. Everything else on the part is symmetrical. That's an eight inch. So this would be an eight inch radius. The problem with this part is uh, none of the tangency points and you can see the green indicator here showing that these are all tangent at these points. Uh, none of those points are given. So this is uh, a problem for some people. Uh, on the prototrack with the auto geometry engine, the AGE auto geometry engine, uh, this is a piece of cake. Uh, by the way, the uh, auto geometry engine has been around, uh, I think we, we introduced that in 1995. Uh, that's a 21 year run on software. Uh, I don't know of any other software that's had a useful life uh, anywhere close to 21 years, that's for sure. Uh, thing of it is, this software uh, eliminates the trigonometry that would be required to do this part. Uh, sure, you can do it in a CAM package. Uh, <clears throat> I have pre-programmed this part, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, on the Prototrack uh, SMX control. And there you have it. And if we go through these steps here, um, we can see I'm starting on this one inch radius. And then I have that tangent mill move. Uh, you notice the endpoints are left open because not required on the pro track. Into the four inch radius, up into the tangent mill move, into the one inch radius, and so on and so on and so on. So the part is there. It's programmed. I'm let's say I've already machined the part, but an engineering change comes along, and the engineer says, "Oh, for whatever reason, that's got to be three inches six fifty." So now he sends you another print showing you this. So what do you do? Um, well, you can go, if you're programming it into the CAM, you can go ahead and program it into CAM and bring it down and involve a whole lot of labor. Or you can just tell, uh, send the print to the fellow on the shop floor with the prototrack. So now on the prototrack, we've got to change our 3.6 inch centers to three inches, 650 all the way around the part. So we'll come down here and make that three inches, 650. Change the center height to 3 inches 650 on all the 1 inch radii, 3 inch 650, whoops, this would be minus 3.65, that would be this one right down here. This would also be minus 3.65. This one right here. And this here YN would be uh, 3.65. And the center would be at 3.65. Now the whole part has been changed now. I don't know how long that took me, probably uh, a minute or so. Uh, but if you were going to do this in the cam, the fellow would have to, he couldn't even walk to his cam system. Uh, in the amount of uh, time it took me to make the change and get in back into the cut. Um, AGE, that's how it survived so long. Now suppose we found on the shop floor that this radius of four inches was just a little bit loose. So we're gonna make an engineering change to that. We're gonna come in here. In our look feature, we're gonna highlight the thing we want to change and press our look key. And we're going to come down and change that radius ever so slightly to three inches, 995. It's done. And let's change the two inch radius too. Let's make it a little bit smaller. We 
this step until we get to that feature we want to change. Press your look key and come down and maybe make that a And it's done. Now that we've made the required engineering changes to the part or we've uh, adjusted the part on the shop floor to make it function properly or we've created this part from a napkin drawing or a sketch, uh, we need to articulate this to engineering so we're going to give it to them in a language they understand using the Prototrack DXF option. What we'll do is we'll go to programming out save and we'll save that as a DXF file. And it says are you going to overwrite the old one. Yes, we want to overwrite it with this new stuff. And that's what it's going to send to engineering. So now that you've made the changes to the part on the shop floor, or, or perhaps this was a, a napkin drawing you got and you created the part and you fiddled around and got it to a point where it's acceptable. And now you, what you need to do is articulate this information back to engineering. Uh, once they get it back there, they can update the existing model if it's a change to one that existed, or they can create a brand new model and build the rest of the tool around it. So let's assume they want to build a brand new model. Uh, we'll just say here, open the uh, DXF or the engineer's dream 2 DXF file. And we'll tell it to import it as a new part. And he can then go into his uh, tools and extrude that as a solid. Give it some thickness here of 875. And now from your napkin drawing, he has a brand new uh, part that he could do whatever the heck he needs to do with it. Uh, or you can simply go in here and go to a smart dimensioning, let's say from here to here. So you can see that that's been changed from 3.6 inches to 3 inches 650. You could Check that out. We've changed that radius, okay, and we've changed this radius. But you see how effortless this is for the engineer to understand what changes have been made on the shop floor, and that's what Prototracks are all about. Thanks for watching.